There was a very interesting exchange between Joe Rogan and Kid Rock on the war in Gaza that we wanted to break down for everybody. Let's take a listen. If you lived in Gaza, you would be convinced that it's the end of the world, right? Because yeah. it is the end of the world in one place. In that spot, it's the end of the world. But where you are, it's not. And you got to look at it that way. And when I look at it that way, I'm the like, The only Ooh. wars we won were fucking ones we were the most brutal motherfuckers on the planet. Which I don't yeah. disagree with what Israel's doing. It's like they should just go in there and be like, you know what? We want our hostages back. If we don't have them back, clock starts now in fucking 24 hours. We're going to start bombing motherfuckers and killing fucking civilians. 30, 40,000 a fucking time. So you civilians better fucking pack up and fucking get these fucking motherfuckers. And t you, you go against Hamas. You fucking go against them. We're not playing fucking games with you. But that's yeah, the, the only thing people understand. This is what happened armed. in Nagasaki and Hiroshima. Boom. Just wiped out. They're like, oh, yes, we don't have Supreme Leader anymore. We did not know you had such big bombs. Yeah, but everybody has big bombs now. The problem is you use a big bomb. You set a precedent that they can use a big bomb. They don't have one. Well, they don't, but they're allies too. Then we that's bomb the, real the fuck problem. out of them. Someone's going to learn. Yeah, you but gotta, you got to get your ass beat hard enough. Uh, you can't just nuclear bomb people. I they, didn't say they, nuke nuclear them. bomb you back. No, I didn't say okay, nuke them. Okay, you said Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I thought you meant it like no, that. No, no, I was saying just the, the brute force of strength okay. used in those Yeah, but even, even a conventional bombing campaign, if you want to do that somewhere, they can do that to your place. And this is what we have to fuck avoid. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> yeah, until someone launches nukes. Yeah, but if you think about you're a kid and you don't know why there's a conflict between Palestine and Israel it's and you're living war. in Palestine and then they start bombing it's and then war. they kill your mom. It's yeah, but you didn't do war. but right, but you didn't do anything. It sounds like Bud Light. And then you get <laughs> guns, you're going to go want to attack people. You're going to want to avenge them. You're going to want to join whatever group, whatever so terrorist group. So why did World group. War 2 end? No, I'm sorry, man. This is fucking war. It's terrible. It's the worst thing on earth. I'm a peaceful man. Right, but you're not supposed to pick civilian targets. That's actually a you war You can't crime. fight war like that. When but you're not supposed to pick civilian, in civilian targets. targets. They are. Wow. So there's a lot, of, I think, going on there. Uh, I think it's, okay, first of all, what I find interesting about Kid Rock is he clearly, uh, you know, no offense, Mr. Rock, but <laughs> it, it appears you haven't done actually a little bit of reading about the Second World War and exactly why Hiroshima and Nagasaki and those uh, targets were picked. You know, even at that time, the explicit justification, Crystal, was not to hit civilian targets for the sake of them. It was to wipe out mechanical centers and specifically centers of production. Production. The only time where there was an explicit goal of basically burning an entire city of civilians and all that to the ground was Dresden. That was actually not the U.S. It was a U.K.-centered operation. But even then, there was a lot of consternation in America, in the U.K. government, and elsewhere when that decision was made. And it was never justified in the terms that uh, Kid Rock is laying out there. And it didn't work. Well, okay, but there's so let's presume that yeah. it did work. I, I think there's a case for the atomic bomb that it definitely compelled, right, the surrender. But my point is, is that throughout the entire justification of the firebombing campaign on Tokyo, on all of the major cities of Japan, it was always to center industrial production. It was never a primary goal, including of Curtis LeMay and of Bomber Command. You can go and read the history if you would like to. I have done an extensive deep dive into the topic. And it was explicitly agreed from the chief of staff, the president of the United States, Harry Truman, and everybody involved that it was not the quote unquote, the purpose of the operation. And that was when we had atomic and air supremacy. Rogan's best point there is like, well, first of all, dude, you know, other people can also do that. And this, the reason I'm talking this way is let's accept that this actually would work. Well, it didn't work. Number one. Yeah. You know, it may have worked in the atomic case, but the atomic supremacy and all that we had at that time no longer applies in this. Correct. And then whenever we did firebomb Dresden and in much of the lat later stages of the war, the veracity of the the, the ferocity of the uh, firebombing campaign compelled many Germans, including Luftwaffe pilots, Wehrmacht soldiers, children, older men, to fight even more for Hitler because they didn't want to repeat the same humiliation of Versailles, which made it much more bloody and much more difficult to compel victory in the first place. So that's if you just don't even accept much of the morality. And then Rogan's point, of course, is like, hey man, that's also a war crime. Like you're not supposed to do that. 
And that's the thing, it's what shocks me is even, you know, everybody just c- tries to retcon World War II. They didn't even talk like this then. Yeah. And we were fighting the Nazis yeah, and the right. Japanese. That's right. Like, and they hid the yeah. photos and videos of what was done to civilians. Oh, yeah. yeah. For yeah. They didn't tell anybody for decades, a long time. Because they right. knew the horror. Right. And there's also a reason why after World War II, we say, all right, we got to have some rules of the road mm-hmm. here. Because to your point, even at that time, it was you know clear that the U.S. wasn't going to be the only one with nuclear capabilities, and so you know that was why we had to establish. All right, we have to protect civilians number one because this shit that just happened cannot happen again, yeah. and why there was so much policy around nuclear deterrence because it is a very different deal when you are the one and only baddie out there with a nuke. And now, you know, Israel has, Iran is close. Right? You have numerous- Saudi, Saudis have nukes. You have yeah. numerous global powers with nuclear, massive nuclear capabilities that could literally destroy the world. And I actually appreciate Rogan bringing that up because that is a facet of this that we actually don't explore that yes. often. We talked about it, we talk about it more with regard to Russia and Ukraine because the conflict there is so direct. But that is the logic of, you know, Kid Rock's idiotic fuck around and find out mentality is like, oh, really? Let's explore where that actually goes. He raises not only the the fact of, you know, the escalation that you do not ultimately want, which could have massive implications for everyone on the globe. He raises the morality of you can't target civilians. That's a war crime. That, there's a reason why we put that out of bounds. But he also talks about the fact that, you know, even in terms of, even if you put aside the morality of it, which I don't think we should do, but even if you put that aside, these little kids who just had their mom killed, like, what do you think is going to happen to them? Mm-hmm. They're going to be radicalized. They're going to grow up and join whatever militant terrorist organization is available, and they're going to try to come and kill you. So even just from a, a logical, like, all right, we got to win and we got to keep our people safe, et cetera, perspective, this is foolish. And it has been clear that this is foolish from the very beginning. So I actually thought he did a good job raising some very salient points in a very accessible way. And I mean, Kid Rock is just embarrassing. Sometimes people think Joe is just going to go along with That's whatever right. insane bullshit they're going to spell. <laughs> and he is, has this normie instinct of like, you know, other people have big bombs too. And by the way, those are war crimes. So maybe we shouldn't be going in that yeah, direction. Yeah, and it's also, it actually doesn't make sense too. I mean, I, the, what everybody, where the instinct comes from is, uh, you know, it's, it's an obvious instinct. And it's one that a lot of Americans said after World War, or sorry, after uh, 9-11, they're like, oh, there's bomb back to the Stone Age. Everything I learned about Islam, I learned about on 9-11. But here's what people don't get. The, I think the only pr- historical precedent for the mindset that he's talking about there is Genghis Khan and the Mongols in terms of the way that they were able to subjugate many of the powers that were under them. Here's what everybody forgets. After a while, those people all, you know, they may have acquiesced in the beginning. They mostly fought back, and in the end, they threw off the Mongols after, let's say, 100 years or so. My point only being that it doesn't really ever work, you know, in the long run. The best empires, the ones that were ever able to successfully conquer, which even the Mongols eventually resorted to, was, listen, you know, we're in charge, you pay us some tax, but you do what you want to do. As in, trying to compel people through force for a long and sustained period of time is very rarely a winning solution. That's, again, the point that I would make. I would also say, you know, look at the number of people that they've already killed. If it was, uh, if the logic was theirs, we're going to continue to kill tens of thousands of people without the hostages being turned over. Well, it hasn't worked so far. Yeah. You know, it, it hasn't worked. If anything, also, I mean, what's the most common talking point? Hamas doesn't care about the population. Well, if that's true, then why would they care if you continue to massacre true. the population? What's the population supposed to do about it? You think they know where all the hostages are? No, they don't. I just saw a video yesterday, uh, I think yesterday, of Ryan, that Ryan highlighted of people of Hamas explicitly, you know, having a conflict or whatever with the local population. But it's one of those where you really still obscure, you know, the actual people who are on the ground and are genuinely defenseless. That's something that yeah. I've taken away from a lot of the reading on the Tokyo c- campaign, on the firebombing campaign, and on Dresden and all of that as well. These really were ordinary folks. I'm talking like farmers, daughters, people who were 16, 17 years old, little kids, and they burned alive. And it's one of those where the people around them never forgot it, and they fought to the death as a result of what they saw. And in many cases, executed prisoners, of our prisoners of war and others 
as explicit revenge for those tasks, which I do not hope or want to invite. It was a horrible time, and it's not something we would ever want to repeat again. Yeah, yeah, we don't anyway. want to go backwards there. Hey, guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber, and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber-funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So, again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.